So this is the internet. I'm on the internet. Everyone knows the internet, right? You're on it. I'm on it. Everyone has the right to an opinion on the internet. Now that that's out there. What the hell? Oh, shit. My battery. Time out. Time out. Do over. Okay. Start again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is the internet. Everyone knows the internet, right? You're on it. I'm on it. Everyone has a right to have an opinion on the internet. Just want to throw that out there. Now that we got that out the way, all right, listen up. I'm not a big DOA content creator. In fact, if you ask part of the community that knows me, they may not even call, really call me a real DOA content creator because I mostly just like making videos over just playing dead or alive. I know how hard it is to stream all the time, make videos, keep up with social media, create content. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. It's like a full-time job, except you don't get paid. And I never saw myself making a video on this kind of like, I don't know, drama. And everyone has the right to their own opinion. And that is important, but that's not gonna stop me from telling you that your opinion is, for lack of a better term, shitty. This video is gonna focus a bit on some of the criticism that Emery Reigns got from some random user and use it as a platform to expand on it and pull back the curtain. Do you like, do you like what I did right there? From a quote unquote dead game. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. He ain't never gave nothing to me. But every time I turn around, cats got their hands out. What? DOA is a niche game. Like DOA is small as fuck. If you compare it to almost any other live stream game at any time like soul Calibur 6 mortal kombat 11 dragon ball z fighters or dragon ball fighters or dragon ball fighter z however the hell you want to say it street fighter v or street fighter vive or street fighter 5 doa has an absurdly low amount of viewers and streamers by default anybody creating content for this game at this point in any shape or manner is doing it from a good place because streaming this game or making videos on this game is not how you get internet famous unless you stream it in japan during evo and get core values in your face <laughs> if you're a streamer, you're streaming to such a small audience within a small community for a game that has a murky future. The starting line for this game is already so far behind other fighting games. So if you're playing this game in 2020, you gotta be loving this franchise one way or another, or it's gotta be brand new to you. A majority of DOA streamers are small just by name association. Streamers like it's Akaru, Yo, It's Rich Matic, Black Moon Rising, Emery Reigns, Free Step Dodge, Dragon Ninja Ryu, Memphis Legends, Blue Eyes White Coffee, Master, Sinful Crystal. And there are so many more that I can't even think of at the top of my head because people come and go all the time. You even had big streamers at one point who played it and gave the game attention. People like Maximilian Dude, Coefficient, Rakuto. For anybody still playing this game a year after release, it hasn't been an easy ride. The game launched with terrible costume parts implementations, no lobbies, no, very little single player. When lobbies did launch, they didn't have any chat or voice chat features. A new ground game that players did not like, a meter system that required adjustment to, a $90 season pass, and currently, as it stands, a hair rental system. There were a lot more issues, but I just can't think of them in this moment right now, but I'm sure y'all in the comment section are going to let me know. The one thing that has been consistently there, though, are the players. The people still playing this game a year later. It goes to show you that some of the players are really dedicated to the franchise and love it from the bottom of their heart. That's why they are also the most vocal in the community. They are the people that critique Koei, Tecmo, and Team Ninja the most because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Get closer closer i said closer unless somebody is being an asshole most people will only critique or criticize you because they want to see you do better it's why they tell team ninja things like fix your hair system it's not a good look bro when you ask people who their favorite doa content creator is there isn't a lot to choose from there is a name that comes up with some frequency though and that is emery reigns i put in work and it's all for the kids but these cats don't forgot what work is 
I'm gonna be real. I don't know Emery Reigns that well. I tangentially heard of him while trying to find DOA content creators like half a year ago. I knew he streamed and that was kind of it, but even then I still don't know the guy personally. From my short time in the DOA community, I learned that Emery is a content creator, a video editor, a streamer, a professional player, a games analyst, a commentator, buff as fuck, and a very proud police officer. Now, I may not have the same gains that Emery has, but look at this keg. I told you last time there was going to be consequences to being in my video. Mm. Oh, hey. Mm, 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 mm. I can probably fit a lot more food in there than he can. Get at me, Emery. Now, to do all of what he does requires dedication and commitment. When you mix all of that with his brash but charismatic attitude, you get him, you know. Emery. It's not easy getting big. It's not easy commentating. It's not easy making content. And it's not easy being a police officer. None of these things are easy. He's like a jack of all trades. And me, like a nobody, learned all of this just by following his Twitter, his Instagram, his Twitch, his YouTube. He doesn't really hide who he is. He's really upfront about what he does at close to 11,000 subs as of recording he's arguably the biggest doa content creator out there being at the top of anything whether it's a mountain or a pile of shit will always give you hate and that's what i want to talk about that's what this video is going to be about i have been told in the past that i'm negative and i've been told in the past that you know um why do i play doa if i don't like it and blah 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 it's it's clear that I like this game. So he recently got somebody talking about his channel, which is normal here on the interwebs. Everglades, or as I'm gonna call him forward, Mr. Glades, Mr. Glades, went to GameFAQs to complain about Emery. This guy's trying to paint me as if I am a bad influence on the game and all this other stuff, and I have always only done stuff for the benefit of our community, okay? At least in the last couple of years since I started to turn a new leaf. There was a time where I was a little toxic, and but everybody goes through that stage before they grow up as a person. I'm a grown-ass man, okay? I have a daughter. I have bills. I have a career. I don't have time to sit here and, and, and deal with drama and all this other shit. A website that, to be 100% honest, didn't really know still existed. I used to use it to try and find out if there was, like... Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Drum Ball Z Budokai. Just hearing like the word game facts just took me to the way back machine. Break bread with the enemy. No matter how many cats I break bread with, I break. Mr. Glades. Responded to a forum where people were trying to figure out and speculate the current state and future of Dead or Alive. He goes on to say, They need to hire content creators. Emery is overall a bad look for the game. Sure, you're lured in with the discussions, tier list, gameplay at a reasonably high level, but does he even like the game? Otherwise, every other video he sobs, the state of the game is not good, slash other negative topics. If you're interested in trying the game, that type of stuff will push you away. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit hard reading this. I follow Overwatch creators and the difference is night and day. They acknowledge it has problems and hope for the best since they actually like the game. Emery whined about the ground game and they added his change the very next patch. And patch after it, he throws a temper over $1.99. Again, next video you watch from him, ask yourself, does he even like this game? And I'm reading this going like, this is such a weirdly specific complaint. He says lured us in as in Emily is trying to like sucker you in. Was he bamboozled? Was he played like a fiddle? Was his time robbed? They played us like a damn fiddle! Now, you and I know that what most people want that complain about a game is for the developers to be held accountable. So does he only want to follow people that will praise the game? I don't know, but let's keep let's keep following this thread and see where his train of thought goes bring it so another user responds to him and says so apparently you expect him to kiss the game's ass am i under am i understanding you correctly i love doa too but i'm not going to like to myself and others and say that the game is a great place right now you misunderstand it's all the way things are presented during overwatch is dead campaign the overwatch content creators acknowledge it's the fault but didn't shit on the game since launch emory has encouraged new players 
There were several new players, including me, that said, I like this game. I don't see the problem. Then he kept saying the old games were better until fools started believing him. Street Fighter V was in a bad state, worse than DOA 6 at launch, but the content creators didn't encourage people to play 4 instead. Truth be told, I believe he doesn't like the game. That's what his audience is built around. Why watch him play Tekken when you can watch Main Man? The same can go for any other fighter. Now, you don't want to go around calling people fools in this context because you're generalizing a whole audience. As a content creator, if people really like you, then it's a super smart move to differentiate your audience and cross mark yourself to other games so that in return, the next time they tune in, if they haven't played DOA before and he is playing DOA, then those are potential new players. It may not look like it, but it's a 200 IQ uh, brain move. All right, back into it. Mr. Glade. So now another user uh, says, he hardly has anything negative to say about the game, honestly. He shills for it more than he criticizes it. Other than his last few videos, the only negative thing he said was something along the lines of, due to a lack of content, there's not much to spend coins on. Which I f***ing agree with. Don't see much of anything that would discourage new players. I don't get the Tekken comment though. People are going to play what they want. Why watch Jay Wong play Grand Blue instead of Lord Knight? Because people like Jay Wong. People are going to watch who they like despite what set person chooses to play for the day. Thank you, rational person, for agreeing with me. I will take your comment and I will put it on my tombstone. So then, Mr. Glades comes back with... Okay, I'll break this down for you. Roro, you're about to drop some truth bomb, boys. DOA 6 comes out, receives good praise, gets a decent amount of players. Then people like Emery complain that the game is different. If you haven't watched all his DOA 6 content, they, you, probably missed the numerous times he'd say things like, it's hard to play this game. Another to note, DOA and Tekken don't have as much crossover fans as Street Fighter and King of Fighters. Part of the reason is due to Harada and Itagaki Fui. When Zakurai would play Tekken, there'd always be some rando that would come in and say just stick to DOA. Once again, bringing in way too many examples at once, but who cares about a random negative watcher, right? Any content creator gets told by viewers that they are wrong at almost any level, big or small. Him mentioning Zakurai is a sample size of one person it's not the best barometer for measuring whether crossover fans exist or not you know as a content creator these claims that he's making seem so outlandish so i reached out to tag right and zach right i hope i didn't weird you out with these questions but i just had to know what is this doa to tech and tech to doa conversion therapy thing you got going on in your streams are people telling you to stop streaming tech and to stream doa and the short answer is no and also he's a really chill and straightforward guy Hopefully I didn't waste any of his time, but yeah, no, none of this was going on. Absolutely, no. More than likely, those people that are telling him not to play Tekken were already not going to play it or watch him. It doesn't move the needle in any direction. This isn't a turf war between DOA and Tekken. It's true Itagaki hates Tekken. Like, hates it. But at this point, how much he hated it and what influence he had over that feud is over a decade old. It's over. All right, all right, all right. Back to the thread, back to the thread. Mr. Glades. Mr. Glades goes on and says, DOA is easier to get into than Tekken. Thanks to the KBD, so a casual player tries to pick it up, good chance they'll drop it. All in all, from the beginning, he hasn't really been encouraging to new players. I don't know he existed until 6 came out. Hey, me too. And like I said, when I get into it, he would say a lot of things that were off-putting. Tekken has numerous content creators that have been at it for 10 to 20 plus years. So the average person would rather watch them play it, especially since newcomers won't play at the highest level. I'm not telling you not like him, as I might still watch some of his content, but he has never been a DOA 6 fan, a fan of the franchise, but nor this entry. So just reading that, I'm a little bit confused because YouTube, I don't know what he means by 10 to 20 years. Like, are you talking about pre-YouTube? Because pre-YouTube was 
forums, web pages, possibly magazines, and maybe some local tournaments. Because we in 2020 and YouTube started in 2005. You know, it's pretty easy and not fair to break down someone's argument when they write it down and you actually analyze it for holes in logic. But wait, there's more. <laughs> this guy doesn't stop here though. A quick dive through Emery's videos and you can see that not only does he watch them regularly, but actively engages in the comments. And not only does he comment, but he is one of the first persons to comment because Mr. Glades' comments are all the way down at the bottom, just absolutely buried. So about a week before the GameFAQs comments, he said this on Emery's We Deserve Better video. This is probably the realest video about DOA 6. Some things could be said about Activision and Blizzard to an extent. Taken players stuck by Tag 2 and it was in a way, it was way worse situation. Same with Street Fighter V, but for whatever, people took a political stance against DOA 6 and Tekken 7 at launch was nothing to write home about. All big games stop. All big games start off kind of iffy, like CSGO 2 and Dota. But if the community is there and the devs are willing, they'll try to make experience the experience. They'll try to make the experience better. When DOA has the same budget as those other games, then it'll be a fair comparison. So he's gonna keep using this false equivalency argument to get his point across and does a poor job of it. He means well with this argument, but it's almost like a word salad where he tries to combine many ideas and concepts and doesn't elaborate on each well enough to carry his point. There wasn't that much of political stance against DOA 6 or Tekken 7. In Tekken 7, people were upset and confused as to whether Lucky Chloe was going to be in the Western release of the game. Spoiler alert! Yeah, she was in it. But then, out of nowhere, Mr. Glades had enough with Emery. Continue the video roll! Alright guys, this is a little bit of a long one, but stay with me. First video I couldn't watch from you. It just feels so wrong that there are content creators out there making a profit off of a game they don't even like. Or do you? On one hand, you put out some of the best content there is regarding DOA 6. But on another hand, you've been one foot in and out of it the entire time. One day, you like the game. The next video, the game is on life support. Fortnite skins cost $20. If they were to do a pack of 50 to 70, it wouldn't easily cost more than $90. Doa is only expensive if you feel the need to own everything. Half the time, you have said you're not buying costumes. Why do you feel the need to own every hair color available for, say, Kasumi? Are you going to play three matches back out so you can change it, rinse, and repeat? If you don't buy the skins because you don't like them, why does it matter how much they cost? Again, 50 to 70 skins when individual ones still cost less than $5. Dead or Alive doesn't have a bad business model. It's just every other fighter does. Outside of the FGC, Dead or Alive is very fair in pricing. Have you seen how much cards cost in 2K? What about the numerous things Call of Duty has done? What about Overwatch, where you can drop $200 and still not get the skins you want because it's RNG? Everyone that's played DOA last year has had a fair chance to earn at least $5,000 by winning a tournament. There's also sponsors, stream donations, the works. But let's not speak on that. The real issue is I can't pay $1.99 and own everything. So once again, this is a fallacy. This is a false equivalency fallacy. He's comparing different genres of games that have different business models. Yes, they feature microtransactions. However, they are implemented into the systems based on RNG. The other thing too is that he's saying that Dead or Alive doesn't have a bad business model, but all the other fighting games in the fighting game community do. And... That's just not true. You can buy a $30 season pass for Dragon Ball Fighters and get like six new characters. The same thing with Tekken. This, with Soul Calibur, you can get like a $20 or $30 season pass and get four new characters and costume parts. That's just absolutely not true. I get the point he's trying to make, but he's doing just a piss poor job of getting it across. Secondly, if you make any kind of revenue off of videos, you would know that your CPM, which is short for counts per thousand, 
changes all the time. When I used to make uh, revenue on an old Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel, my CPM was like 16 cents, which means that for every 1,000 clicks on a video, I would get 16 cents. CPM changes and fluctuates depending on what kind of content you make. And when you make videos on M-rated games, you either get age-gated or low CPM because it's not advertisement friendly. Nobody out here is any making any real money on DOA. We aren't making thousands or millions of dollars off these videos. I ain't got no buka money. Mr. Gladez is being extremely delusional here. Next! You won't see Team Ninja take the feature away and give everyone tickets to compensate. None of you speak for all of us. I'm disappointed that everything about this game comes down to the loudest voices in the community. There wasn't a poll done asking everyone what they thought about it first. Just the biggest DOA influencers went rogue and contacted biased media channels that will only report of the hair DLC to take another dump on DOA slash gaming. Jim Sterling would never open his mouth to say a single positive thing about this franchise. At the end of the day, Team Ninja owns the rights to those these characters and they never had to give this option up in the first place. Everything about this feels wrong, like the community is stiff-arming Team Ninja into changing the price or else. I've never heard someone tally up how much it would cost to own everything in Fortnite. Only DOA gets that kind of treatment. When Team Ninja asks Koei Tecmo to greenlight DOA 7, Koei might shove it, like nin the Ninja Gaiden series. Is it worth to make another DOA? Dealing with not only the bad press that scared them into not releasing DOA Extreme, but toning down DOA 6. Oh, the Dead or Life franchise does is give Koei a bad name. They can't even ask for an optional $1.99 a game. They let everyone in the world play for free. Everyone harasses them on Twitter whenever they post anything about give us X, give us Y, we want this, we want that. When Safari- He took Mick- What? When Safari took Nicki Minaj's card, he said he thought it was the free money card. That's what the community must think of the budget of this game right now. Meanwhile, Sam Show players would love to get monthly cosmetics to retain player interest. Same with other games with smaller communities. To end this rant, if my favorite character is Kasumi, then it's possible that I could have spent maybe $10 on this game. Not everyone has spent $2,000. S-M-H, shaking my head. Man, that Nicki Minaj metaphor is lame. It makes, like, n no sense. Once again, using that false equivalency rebuttal. Even if you compare a DOA to a game like Fortnite, Fortnite is continually making new assets to keep players interested. New map changes, new costumes, new modes, uh, new movie and TV show tie-ins like Star Wars, uh, you know, Superman, Batman, Suicide Squad. I, I think they've done something like that. Oh, yeah, Thanos was in the game. Thanos was in Fortnite. This person clearly wants to be the hero that Team Ninja needs, but not the one they deserve. In his own mind, they are the hero. All he has done is defend the DLC practices. Now, credit where credit is due, he does have a point in getting the free version and buying your main. But even then, how do you expect to get better if you can't even practice against the whole cast in training mode? Once again, I understand that this is supposed to come from a good heart, but man, is this all kinds of misguided. And what's even crazier to me is that a lot of his comments on YouTube are edited, which means he is still having all these spelling and grammatical issues even after reading them over once or twice. He's either writing his comments in a flurry, he isn't smart enough to recognize his own mistakes while reading them multiple times over, or he has issues stringing together clear and concise thoughts. On your own, exco deliver to your knock knock, open up the door and spread. Mr. Glades either has mental health issues, lacks critical thinking skills, or he's a teenager. I'm not a professional. I'm basing this entirely on his vocabulary, his grammar, and his weird obsession with hating Emery, but looking at all his videos, commentating on him and all that stuff. He's complaining about a niche game, a niche content creator for that game, on a low traffic website forum, on the internet, to people he will never meet, about a person he will probably never see, on his computer or smartphone, probably in his room, in his house, somewhere in his state or providence, in a continent, on earth, in the galaxy. 
Now that is some scary levels of big brain thoughts going on right there. You know, I don't even, I don't even know if there's a solution to his problem. Like, think about it. What solution would he be happy with? Would he be happy if Koi Tecmo were to start paying Emery? If Koi Tecmo hired content creators to promote their microtransactions? If less YouTubers started making videos on DOA6? If DOA6 just went into the dark and suddenly shut down? Now, I don't know if y'all have kids. I don't, but I babysit a lot. This is like when a kid wants something and you don't give it to him, then he throws a tantrum, and then you give it to him, but he still keeps on crying because now he's just crying. He can't stop crying until he takes a nap. And when he takes a nap, at that point, he still doesn't even have what he wanted. And he w when he wakes up, he may not even want that thing anymore. Mr. Glades could totally very well be immature and just not fully understand the world just yet. Hell, I'm 29 years old and I still don't understand why I make stupid decisions or why people around me make stupid decisions. The difference is I have insight. I can analyze my bad decisions and make better decisions next time. Sometimes I think if you shed light on a subject or a particular attitude, then it will help people change some of their behavior. Sometimes when you see yourself on a screen through other people's eyes, it might be embarrassing, but it might help you understand how ridiculous some of your actions are take a look at this quick clip from dr phil i want everybody to look at this insight the ability to see and understand why you do the things you do the ability to see oneself without distortion insight is the number one key to change i love dr phil all right, if you weren't tuning in before, start tuning in now because we got some DMs to go over. So I'm not going to name this person because I don't want to give him any more attention at this point. But he sent me this message. This was a while back ago. Can you please unfollow me? I don't like you. Just leave me alone. I never liked you at all. Just leave me alone. Just go away. Please ban for a reason. Not because of sinful. Just don't follow me on social media. And thank you. And I got this message out of nowhere. This was during a Rich Maddox stream. And on top of that, I had no idea why. Turns out it was a response to this message. Originally, Sinful Crystal, she got this message. Uh, she responded with how so, and they responded with blank has been doing the same thing. Well, this is in my favorite suite. So can file a please report on him tomorrow. Boom. Well, sure, he now can leave me alone. And we'll do the same thing with iHeartGaming so I can play these games either way and win. It's very difficult to read that. Terrible spelling. I'm using Mr. Glades as an example so y'all can see how this behavior can start and what it can possibly turn into. I edit some of Crystal's Raging Afterthoughts videos. These are some of the messages that Sinful Crystal gets, and by association, I get these two every now and then. This isn't okay. Not for her, not for me, not for Emery. These people, for whatever reason, feel like they are personally attacked and sometimes escalate things, especially in a smaller community like Dead or Alive. Sometimes, smaller communities attract people that might not possibly be accepted in other communities. These are the fringe and not indicative of the community as a whole. And this can happen in any community or fandom. If these kind of people can watch this video, then I really hope it can help them. Don't be like that person. Don't be like Mr. Glades. You know, I ask myself why I even make this kind of video. Is it worth putting this much energy into one comment from a random internet stranger on a niche fighting game? Before I would have said no because that person's a hey ass hater. However, now that I'm older and more mature, sometimes, I am willing to forgive and educate instead of demanding an apology and making somebody feel stupid. After all, Mr. Glades could use all these analytical skills and put them into something productive. Watching a video, forming an opinion on it, writing it down, and conversing with other people, you know what? That does take skill and time. The amount of time he has to spend watching YouTube videos, he could be spending in learning new skills. New skills like video editing, sound engineering, plumbing, studying, even how to be a better person. Sorry, I needed to change position. I've been sitting down for too long. Also, I feel way taller now. If he wants to see better content for DOA, why doesn't he just make some? He has a YouTube channel. Even if he doesn't have the equipment, he could make it a goal to get the equipment. You would be surprised what you could create with a short amount of tools, but a huge amount of effort. 
I don't think Mr. Glades is a bad person. I think he, he feels he's been personally betrayed for whatever reason. And he sees himself as a hero of his own story for better or worse. And he sees the bad guy as Emery. He can easily not watch Emery, or he can simply just turn the screen off on his devices and go outside. After all, he is arguing about a game company that probably won't acknowledge him, probably will never know who he is, in a fighting game he may not succeed in, watching content creators that he personally doesn't agree with. For some people, it's hard to understand that there are 7 billion people in the world, and you might not agree with all of them. I mean, that's 7 billion opinions. Hopefully, him seeing how ridiculous he sounds will be a learning experience for him. I also hope this is a learning experience for other content creators, as well as viewers and the relationships between viewers and content creators. If Team Ninja or Koei Tecmo is watching, I hope that they understand that in their lack of communication with their own player base, they're causing some hurt among some people. It sucks to see one of your favorite game franchises make such poor decisions. And it echoes among the community, not just with Emery, but with me. With a website like Free Step Dodge, with the subreddit, with other content creators on Twitch and YouTube and tournament players, and even artists. Most content creators that make content on this game do it because they care about the game. My goal with this video is that I hope everyone learns from it, even people that don't play DOA, even people involved in other franchises. I hope if you were a good person, then you become a better person. And if you were a crappy person, then you become a good person. Thanks for watching. Also, yeah, go check out Emery if you haven't. He does more than just DOA. Don't be a weird stalker. Actually, don't even just stop at Emery. Go check out all the other cool people I listed. Zachary, Crystal, all the heck, all the other streamers that I pointed out. Anyway, good night.